That's how reality works. Good. Thank you for bringing that up. So, does, uh, along those lines, does God have to use his power to inflict damage upon us when we break his laws? No, he does not. So what is Babylon actually today? If we want to be literal instead of metaphorical, what's the literal Babylon? Well, here's one of the founders of the FD, SDA church um, who wrote this in the book called Great Controversy, page 381. In Revelation 14, the first angel is followed by a second, proclaiming, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink the wine of her wrath, of her fornication. The term Babylon is derived from Babel and signifies confusion. It is employed in scripture to designate the various forms of false or apostate religion. This is broader than false Christianity. I want to put that idea. So many times we focus false Christianity. This author says false or apostate religion is represented by Babylon. In Revelation 17, Babylon is represented as a woman, a figure which is used in the Bible as a symbol of a church. Now we get to Christianity. A virtuous woman representing a pure church, a vile woman representing apostate church. So Babylon, prior to Christ, was Babylon in existence? Was bat with our false and apostate religious systems in the world? But after Christ, the church was established. And the Bible warns at the end of time there's a Babylonian type system of religion that infects the church. An apostate church. A church that does not represent Christ. It's not pure. Do you agree that that's what Babylon represents? False religious systems that misrepresent God. Including false systems in Christianity. What do you think is the root cause for the confusion all these multitude of conflicting doctrines, beliefs. Look at, just look at Christianity now. Within Christianity, is there unity of belief and understanding of the Bible? There is a conflicting, uh, and, uh, and dis not just disagreeing, but often opposing views, exactly the opposite views being taught from the same scripture. Why is this, how is this even possible that this could happen? I will tell you, there's one root lie that underpins it all. And we, and we have been talking about this for years in here. And that root lie that underpins it all, all this confusion, is how you understand God's law. If you understand God's law functioning like human law, system of imposed rules requiring punishments, rather than worshiping the creator whose laws are design laws, that causes a confusion. I'll give you an example. How many laws, human laws, human laws, are there in force here in this city, this county, this state, and this nation? How many human laws are in force here? Right upon us right now. And, and, and how many more would we have if we added all the municipalities from the entire country? And how many more if we added all the laws of all the countries of the world? And if we added all these human laws from all the countries of the world together, would they all be in harmony? No. Would there be some that are exactly the opposite? How about in our own nation? There are places where one county or district or city or state have laws that are exactly the opposite of what is legal and allowed in other states. For instance, I'll give you a simple one. Is marijuana legal in some states and illegal in other states? Yes. Do we have harmony in our human laws? Why don't we have harmony? Because of the type of law they are. They're just made up rules. They're just made up. That's all. And it was our legal justice system so convoluted, complicated, confusing, contradictory that anybody who has to deal with it needs a legal expert, lawyer, to help them deal with it. Yes or no? Yes. When we have theology built upon human law, we have all kinds of made-up beliefs that are not grounded in reality and often contradictory and confusion. We have uh, confusing. We have religions made up making things up that are so complicated, convoluted, confusing, that believers need an expert, a theologian, a pastor, a pope, a priest, somebody who has studied for decades in order to tell them what it means. This is part of Satan's 
world. This is not God's kingdom. It's not how he wants things to work. Now let me show you the design law, how simple it gets when you go to design law. When you look at design law, is there any confusion in the world today, in any culture, in any group, in any religion, over the benefits of clean air and clean water? Do you have anybody saying, we want contaminated, we want our water contaminated with sewage? Nobody argues for that. Everybody understands the benefits. So simple. So how about the damaging effects of tobacco smoke today? in our societies today. The whole world knows this, that people may smoke, but they know the damaging effects. How about the results of jumping off buildings? <laughs> There's no argument. Catholic, Jewish person, uh, Protestant, uh, Buddhist, Muslim, they're all on top of the Empire State Building. There's no disagreement about what happens if they all jump. They don't have different theological views on that. It's constants. It's how reality works. Only when we come back to God's design laws do we understand and have harmony. It's, it's unifying. But let me ask you this. Is there still confusion today amongst religious groups over dietary practices? Why? There's a reason. Because in many religions, dietary practices are not built on the laws of health. They're built on a religious code made up rules. Like not using these utensils that have been used with milk products with, the, with these um, foods that have meats in them. We can't use those utensils or refrigerators or ovens. If we use them for milk and cheese, they can't be used for meat. That's a made up rule. It's confusing. or because people misunderstand the scripture and apply instructions over ceremonial, theatrical practices to actual health practices. For instance, doing away with the ceremonial laws, you no longer have to practice the, the theater anymore. So there's no ceremonial condemnation for eating things in certain ways and washing your hands in certain foods. Uh, confusing those theatrical instructions with the laws of health. Well, if I'm not going to be ceremonially condemned for eating anything I want, then, then any, I can eat anything. It's all good. It's all healthy, right? Well, no, it's not. People confuse those laws, the laws of health with the code of religious instruction. When we confuse God's law for man's law, a system of rules that is often the result, of religi often the result for religious people, they often make up rules. Then we end up in confusion. Not only do they end up, we end up fragmented into different groups. I want you to see this. When we do this, when we go down the trail of, of God's law works like human law, we need to make up rules. We, we, must, we must police those rules. Not only do we end up confused, broken, fragmented, because we want somebody who accepts the rules as we accept them, we eventually, inevitably, end up coercing people to keep our rules. We end up, if we get power or seeking power, to police first in our church, let's disfellowship those folks. Let's censor those folks. Let's, we police and you don't believe the way I believe? You believe in baptism by spring? It doesn't matter that you have been reborn, you have a gracious Christ-like heart, that you started a ministry to help the homeless. That doesn't matter. You haven't been baptized by immersion. Get out of my church. We begin enforcing rules rather than unifying around the principles of God's kingdom, truth, love, freedom. From the same book I quoted earlier, Great Controversy, page 383, two pages later. Many of the Protestant churches are following Rome's example of iniquitous connection with the kings of the earth. The state churches, by their relation to secular governments and other denominations, by seeking the favor of the world. And the term Babylon, confusion, may be appropriately applied to these bodies, all professing to derive their doctrines from the Bible, yet divided into almost innumerable sects with widely conflicting creeds and theories. What, is, what, what, when we accept the lie that God's law functions like human law, not only do we fragment into our own rules and try to recruit as many people to our rules, 
We've been policing the rules and, been, and then coercing various levels and then eventually seek the power of the state. Not even people who want to join with us do we police. We police people who don't want to be with us. You need to conform to our practices. We need to pass laws to make it criminal to do this or to do that or to do something else. What is it that moves people from God's kingdom to Babylon? I believe it's rejecting God as creator as evidenced by his design laws and accepting human imposed law as God's law that corrupts the way we see God, corrupts the way we understand his methods, and it causes confusion. From the book Patriarchs and Prophets, it says, this is page uh, 124, in the professedly Christian world, many turn away from the plain teachings of the Bible and build up a creed from human speculations and pleasing fables. And they point to their tower as a way to climb up to heaven. Pause. Why? Why do people build up this creed, whatever the creed might be? What is the reason for us to make this list of the 28 things you must attest to? If somebody only believes 16 of them, they don't believe all 28, they believe 16. Does that mean they're, they're not on God's side? They're lost because they don't have the right cognitive understanding of, of truth. Are we saved by our cognitive attestations to a list of beliefs? Is that what saves us? What saves us? What does salvation actually mean? Healing, Healing of? Heart, mind, and character, so that fear and selfishness are replaced with love and trust. Now, it's true the person who is saved by God, has a new heart and right spirit, will be a lover of truth. They will want to grow in actual truth, the truth of God as he's revealed it in Scripture. That's true. But are all of us on the same progression of truth assimilation? Can two people have absolute pure hearts with God, love the truth, love to grow in the truth, but be at different places in their, one's a freshman in high school, the other's got a postgraduate degree. But they both have hearts that love to grow in truth. Do, should we judge people and their sincerity and whose kingdom they're in based on whether they've gotten to the point they accept all 28? I don't think so. I think it really is their attitude when they're confronted with divergent views. I think one of the things you can see is people reveal their character when you suggest, well, maybe that's not necessary. Do they go, Romans 14, well, that's okay. Let every person be fully persuaded in their own mind. We can love each other and not agree on this particular fact or point or interpretation of, of the, the, the horns of, uh, of the beast in Daniel. Uh, we can have different views of that and still love God's principles and kingdoms and methods and, and how we work. Truth, love, freedom. I give you freedom to see it different. It's okay. Or do we go, you're going to burn. You're a heretic. You don't see it like this. I'm sorry. If you don't agree with this, God will have to burn you. You have heard that kind of stuff? Is that more revelatory than the actual accepting of the doctrine? We call it church discipline. Church discipline, yeah. Continuing with the quote, men... Pardon? It's always that I know better than everybody else. Yeah. Because obviously I'm smarter than everyone else. And so, what, and so what's driving this discomfort with somebody's divergent view? What drives it in the person? Fear. 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 They become insecure. They become uncomfortable. They need the other agreement for them to be reinforced. And what is the, one of the, the root emotion to Satan's kingdom? Fear. Fear, Fear which, which drives selfishness. As soon as Adam and Eve sinned, they ran and hid because they were afraid. afraid. Fear causes us to look out for who? Ourselves. Perfect love casts out all. Fear. So these types of responses of intolerance are always driven by fear, just as prejudices and bigotries, uh, etc., etc., are always driven by fear. As love comes in the heart, fear is driven out, and we can accept people who are at different stages. And we can even, when I say accept, a parent who has a child who's smoking two packs a day doesn't accept cigarettes as healthy. They know they're not. They love the child anyway, and they accept the child's freedom to do that if they want. 
But they never, their acceptance is never understood to say, oh, cigarette smoke's just as healthy as not smoking. It's never understood to say that. And this is where people get confused when it comes to other issues of morality. That we can love the person who hasn't given their heart to Christ, but, but this idea if we love them and give them the freedom to not accept Christ and still love them, somehow that's interpreted as this idea that, oh, you're condoning sin. No, you're not. Look at Jesus and the woman caught in adultery. 